Yes. Uh, I would like to take this chance to express my admire about the uh, about uh, Professor Li uh, Qilong and Professor Huang Kuan about their enthusiasm in establish such a pioneering work to establish the standard uh, of radical hysterectomy. And it's my honor to chair the uh, coming next two sections. And the first would be uh, Professor uh, Li Jijin. Uh, Dr. Lin is the uh, country uh, uh, associate professor and, and attending physician in the Department of General Medical Imaging and Intervention and in Schengen Memorial Hospital. Uh, today, uh, his talk and the topic of his talk will be MRI in evaluation of gynecologic oncology from basic to advanced. We know that uh, Dr. Lin uh, made a lot of uh, clinical uh, research and basic research in the uh, medical imaging. Let's welcome Dr. Lin. We can start to share. Uh, uh, okay. Thank you, Professor, for your kind introduction. And I'm very grateful to Dr. Professor Huang Kuan for inviting me to share our experience on the MRI. And also, I really appreciate this morning that Professor Li has demonstrated such a wonderful uncut video for the radiologist, the imager. We only look at the 2D gray and white so our life is not as vivid and colorful as you guys but today is the, the only 20 minutes i would like to bring you the the most uh, advanced technique uh, our experience in the chunker memorial hospital to share with you for the radiologist seeing is believing and the MRI, among all the imaging technologists, is the, the best one for imaging the anatomy of gynecology structure because pelvis is very delicate and complicated. I always teach our residents that, that our female structure is like a young girl. It's very pretty and delicate. On your right-hand side, you can appreciate that in the sagittal T2-weighted MRI. We can appreciate the endometrial cavity and the zonal structure, we call it junctional zone, that's the dark area of the inner layer of the uterus and the serosa side and the, the cervix, we can see the nabothian cyst and the glandular lining and the stroma tissue of the uterine cervix and then the vagina and the vesicle vagina septum is full of vascular structures. And on posterior, we can appreciate the structure of the cul-de-sac and the rectum and the presacral space. I have next slide, please. So today the outline is a brief introduced uh, basic anatomy. You can appreciate on the MRI image and the recent advancement of MRI, including using diffusion weighted imaging and MR spectroscopy and the PET imaging in order to solve the clinical questions on the tumor detection, tumor diagnosis, and the prognosis. And in the, the last minute, I would like to introduce the next generation imaging, including using artificial intelligence and the dynamic nuclear polarization, we call it DMP MRI. Next slide, please. So I would like to use this chance to review the video we have seen this morning and to identify the important structure because as uh, Professor Huang Kuan mentioned that standardized laparoscopic surgery is very important and we radiologists are still trying to catch up with you guys surgeons you can identify those delicate structure 
And the first one is uterus sacral ligament. It's from the sacral bone to the uterus. And the best imaging to identify this structure is the sagittal titillated image. You can see a linear structure connecting from the sacral bone to the uterine uh, posterior surface. Next slide, please. Okay, now, now my, my controller is working, so I will control it on my own. The second one is cardinal ligament. Cardinal ligament is the supporting ligament for the our whole uterine structure. And the best imaging to identify this structure is this coronal view imaging of T2-weighted. You can see the dark band supporting the uterus from the bilateral side of the pelvis. Next slide, please. Yeah. The third one is round ligament. Round ligament, as you can appreciate clearly on the uh, scope, scope video, but it, on the MRI, it's actually a very delicate structure that linking the parametrium to the anterior pelvic wall. That, as you can appreciate here, this is T1-weighted MRI imaging, and all the tissues are outlined by the fat. You can see the linear structure connecting anterior to the left pelvic cavity, this round ligament. Next slide, please. And the fourth one is broad ligament. Broad ligament is cover the entire structure, uh, is cover the entire structure you've seen on the video. On the MRI, it's only very thin layer, and we can trace if there is any pathology on this surface using the T2 weighted coronal imaging and to trace the line on the serosa side of the uterus that we can identify that any pathology on the broad ligament. Next slide. Yes. And the, the last one is the suspensory ligament of the ovary. Sometimes it's the parametrium here is very crowded. So we need to be very careful. On our structural report, we always identify all the pelvic structures, including the suspensory ligament. And it's, it's just a very small structure on the MRI and uh, connecting to the left parametrium and uh, around the left external iliac area. Next slide. So we have finished identifying all the structures and the MRI, why is so important? Because the basic theory is very simple that you put an atom, usually it's a water molecule, and you have proton on the water molecule. You put it in the high field, the magnetic field, and then you will generate a physical property called spin. And then we just, by listening to the property, we use the spatial encoding, then we can generate the imaging on, as we know that medical imaging is MRI. Next slide, please. And recently, if we use this theory, but we give it a pause for focusing and refocusing, and then we can measure the random motion water molecule, we call it diffusion-weighted imaging. For the normal tissue, the water molecule can freely diffuse among the tissue. However, in the tumor, in the cancer cell, the, because the cellularity has increased, so the diffusion of the water molecule is limited. So using diffusion weighted image. Next slide, please. We can highlight the tumor structure. This is the sagittal, sagittal T2-weighted MRI. And you can see the highlighted structure is the signal generated by the diffusion weighted imaging. And because it's imaged on the same time of the standard anatomical MRI. So we found it very useful for evaluating the myometrial invasion deaths. Next slide, please. However, for the young female, younger than 40 year old, who would like to have fertility preservation, the diffusion weighted imaging might not be your first choice. That is because they are usually the type one endometrial cancer and the cellularity is not as high as the type two endometrial cancer. And also because of the junctional zone structure made it difficult for the young patient to identify any superficial myometrial invasion. Therefore, for selecting the 
candidate for fertility preservation, we still recommend the radiologist to use contrast enhanced MRI to precisely identify any possible myometrial invasion as demonstrated here. Next slide, please. Let's move on to, for the T2 stage of endometrial cancer. For the cervical stroma invasion, diffusion weighted image is, we found it very useful because traditionally the glandular structure might caused by edema or any pushing part of the tumor. Diffusion weighted imaging can clearly identify the tumor part rather than the perifocal edema of the cancer tissue. Next slide, please. And the, the high malignant uterine cancer, the carcinosarcoma or other the differentiated sarcoma, we found that diffusion weighted imaging is also very useful. And the imaging characteristics of carcinosarcoma is the rapid growing tumor expanding the endometrial cavity and protruding through the endocervical canal and like a myoma delivery. That's the characteristic of carcinosarcoma. Next slide, please. However, for other uterine sarcoma, for example, lyomal sarcoma, we have compared the diffusion weighted imaging and other MR imaging sequences and found out that, as shown here on the right upper corner, if you are online, you can appreciate the, the figure C, that's central necrotic area with pushing border, that's the most characteristic for lyomal sarcoma. If you use diffusion weight image, however, there's a large overlap with, between the lyomal sarcoma and the, the myoma with hyaline degeneration. Next slide, please. For the second most common endo, uh, uterine sarcoma, the endometrial stroma sarcoma, the characteristic is this, like a feather-like, very delicate, very fine peripheral enhancement in the centrally necrotic tumor. Next slide, please. So finishing the differential diagnosis, the next important task for imaging preoperatively is to identify any lymph node metastasis. Division-weighted image also played a very important role for identifying the lymph node metastasis. As you can appreciate here, an endometrial cancer with left external iliac lymph node metastasis, we can identify a very small lymph node, but with cancer cell inside a size of only six millimeter. Next slide, please. And nowadays, the MR imaging has moved on to the, we call it the, the habitat imaging which is what is habitat imaging, because by analyzing all the pixels on the MRI, we can identify the high, high risk clone within the tumor. We can identify the different cellularity within the tumor uh, that represents the tumor heterogeneity and the different response, which might need a higher dose of the treatment. Next slide, please. So the first part introduced is the diffusion weighted imaging. Now is our daily routine. The next part is called MR spectroscopy. As you remember that it's been put in the magnet and then without using the, the spatial encoding, we use frequency encoding. This will generate a spectra, provide the biochemical information of the tumor. Next slide, please. For, for differentiating tumor originating from endometrium or cervical, sometimes it's clinically very difficult. And we found out that by combination of diffusion weighted imaging and the increased lipid signal, methylene signal at 0 0.9 ppm chemical shift, that's indicating the tumor is actually origin from cervix rather than endometrium. Next slide, please. And if you want to dig deeply to the biochemistry of why the lipid signal come from, actually, we found it correlate very good with the high risk group of HPV-19. And we collect the tumor tissue and doing this is a, the deep mass spectrometry uh, measurement. We identify the increased lipid peak correlate with glycerol phospholipid and sphingolipid. So we can confidently see that our signal on the imaging has the support from the tissue sample.
Next slide, please. So after diffusion-weighted MR spectroscopy, now our imaging has moved on to the precision medicine era, and that's called the radiomics. Radiomics, by definition, is high throughput extraction of quantitative information from our daily routine. Next slide, please. But if you think about, we want to quantify the tumor part and by using manually segment the tumor for daily practice is nearly impossible. So therefore in Changgeng Memorial Hospital, we have developed a tool for the computer to automatically identify the tumor without any human intervention by using the deep learning the convolutional neural network, we can train the computer using the unit and the output is exactly the area of the tumor. So therefore we can extract the imaging information from the tumor directly. Next slide, please. Using the similar method before to identify each lymph node would be an impossible job for the daily routine. Nowadays, we are start to try to pick up each individual lymph node and analyzing all the pixels from that to generate a risk stratification model. Next slide, please. So the final slide I will cover the, our recent implementation that's called DMP-MRI. DMP-MRI is based on the MRI theory, but it boosts the signal of MRI by 10,000 volts. The, the theory behind that is this magic polarizer. If you put the tracer into the polarizer and then transfer this tracer as a contrast agent to tissue, you can identify the pyruvic acid, then using glycolysis to, to LDH to transfer to metabolize into the lactate or alanine or bicarbonate or into the TCA cycle, then we can fully understand the background biochemistry of the tumor and also early treatment response to target therapy or any radiation therapy or immunotherapy. Next slide, please. If you compare DMP and the, the traditional FDG PET tracer, it all, both of them entering the vascular compartment. By using the monocapacitor transporter, the pyruvate will enter the cell. Instead of like FDG block into the cell, the pyruvate can be metabolized into alanine and lactate. So you, on the same time, you can image both the substrate and the product of the tumor biochemistry. Next slide, please. So this is the conclusion of the, the MRI. We have been gone through from the basic anatomical imaging, now move on to more uh, phenotypic and the biochemistry. And we would like to be one part of all the precision medicine to support the clinician and surgeons like you to have the treatment decision making tool. Next slide, please. So the conclusion, Basic anatomy, MRI is very good at, but for the laparoscopic specific imaging landmark, we still need to learn a lot. And I, if possible, I would like to read with the surgeons with the uncut imaging. And please let me know which structure you would like to know the most. And maybe we can try to develop dedicated pulse sequence for the laparoscopic surgery. By using those, there is one possibility is by annotating the imaging to your video and maybe using the artificial intelligence and the high, high profile, the PET-MR or the MPMI, we can try to identify the structure preoperatively to improve the patient care. Next slide. Yeah. That's it for all my slides. And I would like to thank you all and uh, thank you for for this morning, thank you.